What is going on, comic fam? It's your boy, the Bearded Comic Bro, and I am joined by comic creator Tim Sheridan. Welcome to the show. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for having me. I am so excited to have you on the show. You, I, I got first heard about you through reading uh, Teen Titans Academy. And so I reached out, and then as I was talking and researching for this, I'm like, oh, okay, cool. You also work on Shazam, which I'm reading. Oh, cool. You also work on Masters of the Universe Revelation. Oh, cool. Oh, you've been doing a lot of stuff in film and TV with DC. I was like, awesome. So you are yeah, like, a I've busy person. Around, I've been sneaking around, and like all of a sudden, people are like, oh, wait, I think I know that name from this other thing. And oh, yeah, he did this. <laughs> So uh, I want to hop in and talk about just all the stuff that you're working on right now. Um, but before we do that, I always like to just find out first, how did you get into creating comics? How did you like, where was there always a love for comics and where did that start? And just how did you get into it? Yeah. So, I mean, I grew up uh, as a DC kid. Actually, I was really a Batman kid. Um, uh, when I, when I first started reading comics, Batman was, you know, my gateway into comics and uh, so I was reading Batman and Detective right out the gate, too. Like, I think, like, as a little kid, I understood that I could, wait, I, there are two Batman titles. I can read. Now there's, you know, who knows how many. Right. Um, but I, but I, uh, but I, you know, couldn't get enough of, uh, of, of Batman. Um, and then, uh, and, and, you know, but I was also always a kid who had an extra affinity for cartoons and I was like like I mean I, before Batman I was watching Spider-Man and his amazing furniture as I call it because he had that furniture that would like you know da -da 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 and it would like you know flip over it was so cool and I was okay. wanted that furniture so I like so I like started I think I was a Spider-Man fan when I was a really little kid because he's because he was on TV right and then uh and then Batman comics were the first comics I really got into then later on, I guys started branching out into more DC. So I was always a DC kid, more than Marvel. I mean, I read some Marvel comics when I was a kid, but I really gravitated toward the kind of storytelling that was happening in DC. And um, and then, you know, uh, through just sort of, I, I'm a lifelong action figure collector, you know, and comic book reader. So I've just kind of always, it's always been a part of my life. Yeah. And then when, uh, when I, I started uh, my career as a as a writer, um, I uh, just had opportunity. I had an opportunity right out the gate to work on a show. I got hired. The first job I ever had in animation was on a show called Justice League Action, which was, you know, a, a sub subversively cool show that uh, looked like it was for kids, but was kind of for everybody. Yeah. And uh, and so I got to come in and work on that show that led to me working on doing the Reign of the Superman uh, animated movie and uh, and then uh, the Long Halloween 1 and 2, Superman, Man of Tomorrow. So uh, and I've also worked on some other TV stuff as well. So I came in through animation. Yeah. And then that's when um, uh, I got a call from DC Comics. They brought in some, a, a bunch of animation writers. Uh, they were looking to get some new voices in the room. Yeah. And, uh, and so we sat down and they kind of pitched us what they were doing going forward. And we met some editors. Uh, I had a couple of editors reach out to me and we were going to start working on some 5G stuff. And then uh, and that all went away. And I thought, oh, well, that was my shot. I'm not going to work in comics. And then uh, they ended up calling me back and asking me about this Teen Titans Academy thing. And if that's something I wanted to pursue. So I gave I pitched how I would do it. And and they were they were ready to go. And then we started talking about Shazam early on as well. So yeah. So that's that was kind of the way it all happened, and and my first comics, I mean, I was a lifelong comic book reader, but my first comics didn't come out until this year. Yeah, and man, you're coming out the gate <laughs> with Teen Titans Academy and Shazam, and then Masters of the Universe. Like you're just you're putting out yeah. great great work. <laughs> it's been a it's been a crazy summer, but also like um you know that Masters of the Universe thing. I wasn't expecting that to come my way, but I was I worked on the show. Yeah. For Netflix and and with Kevin Smith and and a great team over there, and uh, and I got a call um, that uh, that said you know hey do you do you you know Kevin and Rob David from Mattel have a story uh, would you like to to get involved and script these comic books for Dark Horse and I said 
it's funny you should call right now because I just started doing stuff with DC, you know? Yeah, it's, so um, I feel like I would have been terrified to do the comics, the Motu comics, yeah. had I not had a little bit of, uh, you know, DC work under my belt at that point. I mean, I didn't have anything out yet. Uh, but I had been working on stuff with DC okay. for a while. So, yeah. I mean, I literally didn't know how to write a comic book. People will tell you I still don't know how to write a comic book, <laughs> but but I literally didn't know anything about okay. anything. And uh, all I had was Denny O'Neill's book and, uh, and a, a sample Jeff Johns script that my editor gave me from Shazam and said, this is the format I like. So I said, okay. <laughs> Those are pretty good resources to have though to learn how to write. <laughs> I mean, I think so, you know, uh, Jeff Johns, uh, uh, I, I, I didn't know, but I recently met and I told him that story and he said, I was in very good hands with Denny, with, with mm -hmm. Denny's book. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I think you're right about that. I think you're right. <laughs> So, well, let's talk about that a little bit, because you've worked a lot on writing for animation, you know, and you mentioned some of the shows, and I know you did some DC Superhero Girl, like, you've just, yeah. you've been all around. That was on, fun. DC Superhero Girls was so much fun. And I love it, like, as I'm watching, I'm like, oh my goodness, like, I watch this show with my kids, and they love it, so, like, my daughters are huge fans, and, and like, it just, it's a fun show, so I, like, it's completely different than some of your other animation stuff that you had to work in, so I, I'm sure that's unique. How, so look, real quick, how was that experience like difference from those yeah. types of writing? Yeah, you know, so I did, I did um, you know, I worked on, so, so that's an 11 minute cartoon, yeah. right? Each episode is 11 minutes. So I had started in 11 minutes. The Justice League action show was 11 minutes. Um, I did an episode of Teen Titans Go, uh, you know, and, but the, the process for, for doing a Justice League action, doing a Teen Titans Go were just come night and day different from DC Superhero Girls where, they had a a, a a conference room where they brought in the writer with the the the, the story editor, the showrunner Lauren Faust, uh, genius showrunner Lauren Faust, um, and uh, and the series director, and we sat there all day, breaking out story for uh, for DC superhero girls and laughing, and having the time of our lives, and I never I never left a room like that feeling more prepared to write a script. And I was just like, I know exactly what this is and what to do now. And uh, so it was a it was a, a joy to work on. It really was. Um, and I was happy that they had me back for a few more episodes. I would have just kept doing them. Um, if I had, you know, had time, if I wasn't working on other things, I would have just kept working on that show because it was it was great fun. But yeah, like you said, very, you know, it's different. There's yeah. always a unique sort of different hook on these things. I love the fact that DC has always sort of embraced the multiverse, you know, and the idea that that this version can exist over here and that version can exist yeah. over there and we can all be one big happy family and they can inform the other and and uh, and we can enjoy all of it, you know. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a brilliant move by by DC of allowing allowing, you know, a DC superhero girl show to exist in the midst of, you know, for you know, people who want more serious stuff. Fine. There's that world and same with Teen Titans. You got Teen Titans going now you're putting out Titans on HBO like it's yeah yeah so completely Titans different. go on TV at the same time as Titans which is you know a little a little bit darker you know, little, more adult than yeah. than, uh, than the Teen Titans go show so that's that's so cool so, so how how was it then making that transition from writing for film and TV to then writing to for a comic uh I'm still in it man yeah like I, I'm, I'm still in it I um I learn by failing every day in mm -hmm. comics. Like I feel like I, I just yesterday, I, I did, I gave notes on a proof for a, a, a Titans book that's coming out uh, soon. And um, <laughs> soon, <laughs> gotta get those notes in. And uh, I, I, was, I was amazed, I was looking at it and you know, the, the, the art is incredible. Rafa Sandoval is just, uh, has made this a dream for me to work on but where things fall apart you know sometimes is in sort of how I'm telling the story yeah uh, how I've sort of structured it and I find sometimes I don't know it until I see it in front of me until I see the lettering proof and I'm like oh I'm gonna have to go so I've done a, a lot of work on the probably more work on the back end of my mm -hmm. books than maybe a lot of established creators do because okay. they know what they're doing right out the gate I am constantly playing cleanup 
uh, later on, more so than I would in TV and animation and, and movies, um, because I, I'm just not as confident about what I'm putting in the script. Right. And then, uh, and then I'm proven right sometimes when I see the proof. So I'm like, ah, oh. luckily there are things you can do. There are tools available to you in comics that aren't available in movies and TV. And uh, you know, between you know uh, anything from from ca- you know, t- time captions to to actual omniscient narrator caption or you know any, things like that can really help with you know the storytelling we I, I i typically shy away from them i typically don't use them that was something that my editor early on in dc was just like yeah i don't really like narrator captions so maybe don't do them so i didn't do them and i realized they were a really important tool <laughs> you know yeah. it's something that you you probably really ought to get into editor uh, <laughs> but i ended up kind of doing going as a response sort of a meta response to that note, I, I ended up on my Masters of the Universe issue one for Dark Horse, really leaning heavily into some thick narrator captions that are told, that, that it's the voice of one of the characters yeah. in the story, but it's so lofty as to sound like a, a, the kind of comics I was reading as a kid. Mm you know, like a really big event comic. I wanted it to feel like you were opening up and something special was happening. A voice was talking to you that was a God, you know? And, uh, and so, um, so I kind of really leaned into that on that, on that book, which I think was me flexing my muscles, (laughs) not flexing, like, you know, showing off, but flexing my muscles a little bit on captions because I just wasn't doing them at DC. (laughs) That's I know that's real minutia, but it's just kind of those kinds of things are the things that I'm constantly figuring out every yeah. day. Mm-hmm. That's so cool. Uh, you, well, you mentioned you mentioned DC, and I first got exposed to your writing with Teen Titans Academy, um, which has been a blast from the get go. And it's it, so what's surprising to me is I almost didn't pick it up because I am not I t- tend to shy away from. Uh, you know, the school type of books and things like that. But there's something about what you're bringing to the table with this uh, that's different and unique that I have been hooked since issue one on. Um, I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you. So how did, so how did you kind of come about with this idea and pitch then of creating this world that you wanted to with Teen Titans Academy? Well, I'll, you know, Mike Cotton, my editor came to me uh, and said, hey, we want to do this Teen Titans Academy. You know, Mike and I were going to do a Flash 5G book together. Okay. And that, that went away. Um, and I was also going to do a Nightwing Oracle 5G book where they were going to be aged up and, and uh, sort of my age, um, which was going to be very interesting. Yeah. You know? um, and uh, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you what my title was for that story because I'm really hoping I can still use it someday and maybe revisit that, that story. Um, but, uh, but it was fun. <laughs> it was really fun in a real DC way. Um, but yeah, so he came to me and he said, we want to do this Teen Titans Academy thing. And he put together kind of a, a small deck that sort of was a, a, a basic idea for how, what, what, the, what the new format basically mm-hmm. of Titans was going to be. And I just loved the idea. And I said, you know, the way that I would do this is I would, I, you know, he said, look, we have access to use all the original new Teen Titans characters. And I, I, I don't know that he pitched that they would be the faculty or I did, it was probably him. And, um, but I said, look, we have, we have the new Teen Titans, and then we have a, a team of Titans that have been in the comics over the last, certainly in the last year, that I, right. and uh, that people are familiar with, uh, like Crush and Roundhouse and, and Wallace West. And I said, um, you know, but I said, the only way that this really works, I think, as the concept of a school in an academy is if I bring in a whole fresh crop of new kids. Yeah. And those kids are going to learn from the faculty who are the original the og titans Mm -hmm. um and and then you know maybe those other kids can sort of be we can frame them as as the upperclassmen the ones who were who are already active roster titans um although they don't get a lot of service in this book because there's just so many characters to get to 
And happily, it turned out that a lot of people really were interested in the new kids, um, which I was worried that it would, they, you know, they'd say, no, we just want to hear stories about the new Teen Titans, or we just want to hear stories about um, the last uh, most recent team. And uh, that hasn't been the case. The, the thing that surprised me more than anything was the, the, the way that people have embraced the new kids. Um, so, so those are the kids I want to write about because, you know, I you know, got to create them and, with Rafa. And um, so that was it. So, and I thought, I'll tell you seriously, I was like, I'm, I'm going to pitch this and they're going to tell me, yeah, there's no way we're going to let you create a whole group of new characters in the DC universe. Hmm. And, uh, and much to my delight, they said, yep, we agree. That's what you should do. Start sending us some, some ideas for characters. I was like, start here. <laughs> I already have them. <laughs> already have <Yeah>. <laughs> Um. So yeah. So, and they, they evolved a little bit, okay. just like a little bit, but basically, I mean, almost not at all. Like really the, the characters that are in the new, the new class and the freshman class are pretty much the characters that I pitched. Um, I have to really think about, I got to go back and look at my notes and see <laughs> if they really changed significantly. Make you give, I'm giving you homework for after this. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do need to go back and look at that now. It's been a whirlwind of like a year and a half. Yeah. Um, and uh, and those, that was that was a long time ago. So I you know. Oh, and the other thing we did was, I mean, the, the whole thing was conceived. Once we once we started talking about that, we started talking about future state and mm -hmm. how that I said, well, I think for me, if I'm going to do that, let's use that as a jumping off point and have the entire story be related to this event that we're mm -hmm. going to do in future state. So the story, the plan has been you know, the Titans Academy plan from the very beginning was the, the plan. And then future state is simply sort of a look into the future of where that plan, you know, where that, where that Teen Titans, you know, chronology could go. Yeah. So out of all the new casts and that you've gotten to, you know, work with Crane, I'm going to ask you a question that you probably don't want to answer, but who's been your favorite character? To <laughs> I get, no, I get asked this. And, uh, and the thing is like in the very beginning, my, my absolute favorite, I mean, first of all, I love all of them. And how dare yeah. you ask me to choose between my children? I love all my children. <laughs> <laughs> but I, um, I, I was, I really, I feel all, so much in common with the bat pack mm. that, and I, I kind of intentionally kept that, you know, these are goth kids poser goth kids from Gotham City who are orphans who are who grew up on the the legends of Batman on the streets of Gotham and that's what they know of Batman are these let there's a great Batman the animated series episode where you had kids who were telling each other stories about what they'd heard about Batman that's kind of what inspired that yeah um and they were you know these wild sort of ideas about what that who Batman is and what he is and so that that's who these kids are. They they they're obsessed with Batman. They model themselves on Batman, yeah. but their idea of what Batman is is completely based on urban myths. Um, so uh, so I I feel like you know as a kid who grew up on Batman and you know was informed and in my whole life, my career is all about the the Batman myths that I was exposed yeah. to as a kid. I feel a lot of commonality with them. Um, and so I, I thought, oh, these are going to be the best characters. So I kept them off the board for a little bit. I kept them in the background and then did two issues with Steve Lieber that really kind of fleshed them out for people, issues four and five of Academy. And, uh, but along the way, I, I started finding that I was having an amazing time writing for this character, Stitch, who is this magically animated ragdoll character um sort of a child of ward of dr fate perhaps mm -hmm. um and uh but there was a there's a little bit of a sly sort of fourth wall bending thing that happens with stitch that's not exactly not as far along as like deadpool but it's it's just enough that it's yeah it's, it makes you sort of go huh what's going on with this character and so i just really and also this is a character who is um you know, uh, uh, not gender conforming, mm -hmm. which uh, was something that was really important and interesting, you know, to me and important for me to kind of explore with a character. And um, and so that character surprised me and has become one of my favorites to write for. And there's a lot of people that have responded to Stitch uh, in a really positive way. And 
So I'm I'm really happy about that. I mean, yeah. but you know, but there, again, ha- make me choose. You know, right. like you know, you know who I feel. You know, this is a better. I'm going to tell you how to do your job. Here's the better question. <laughs> the better question is who is the character who I love, who I feel like is not getting Ooh. the amount of sort of attention Ooh. that they could get because in the process, just the way the stories have unfolded, a character that I thought was going to be a bigger player hasn't been as big a player yet, oh. and that's Tubi. Marvin Tubi Murakami, who you know has the power, he's, he's, he will grow up to become the hero totally tubular, as we saw in Future State. Mm-hmm. He has the power to turn into a tube. That's the only shape shifting, the only shape he can shift into is uh, various types of tubes, and it seems completely pointless. But the pitch was on him was that it seems pointless, but that in every situation it becomes in- crucial that they have a tube in every fight. And uh, and I haven't been able to do that yet, really. Oh. So uh, hopefully we'll, there's more time for Tubi. You know? and the interaction between uh, Tubi and Roundhouse, uh, I think in one of the earlier issues is just- Well, that was, I, that was so, the, so this is the thing. So I said, look, when I pitched this, I was like, look, I want it to be Degrassi with powers. Yeah. That's what the original idea for the book was gonna be. It's kind of had to evolve from that, but, but 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 in that pitch, I said, you know, so therefore, there should be a character who is like new to school, who is, you know, like, you know, a replacement for yeah. a character who we already know. Like when you're in school and somebody comes to school who, who does your thing, you're like, that's my thing. You know, <laughs> like, who, are, who are you? Why are you here? So that was the idea. And I was like, let's make it like, you know, let's make as many sort of comparisons between mm. two people and roundhouse as we can and have them just hate each other right out the gate, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and so we've had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Well, since you did so well last time, what's the next question you want to answer? <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, <you're fine. laughs> I love that though. I love that question. I'm going to utilize that. Um, I was also I was so happy when they said, you know, you, you can have Billy Batson because I said, look, Billy, you know, to me, the idea, the original concept for the Shazam thing, the the concept that I pitched was that Billy does not have powers at all. They're gone. And he doesn't know what's happened to them. That got a little complicated because they said, okay, so you want to do a Shazam book when we were talking about doing the Shazam book without Shazam ever being in it? <laughs> and I said, oh, well, I guess I see the problem. <laughs> um, so we kind of settled on the powers being unreliable. But the idea of Billy Batson without powers deciding, well, what am I going to do now? I, I'm going to go back to school and learn from somebody like Nightwing how to be a hero without, you know, great, amazing magical abilities. Yeah. And uh, because I think in his heart, that's what Billy would do. He still wants to help, you know? Yeah. Um, so I loved that idea. And so we've gotten to sort of thread a little bit of that and and we, we're, we've spun out the Shazam story into four issues. Um, and that, you know, is a, is a story that is integral to the big overarching story the, of that, that we began with Future State. Mm. So I asked this, uh, I had Stephanie on, uh, on my show a couple of weeks ago, and Stephanie brought up the idea of integrating your stories that you create with because you're in this wide world of DC comics, right? With the main event stories. Um, but you, your story, even Teen Titans Academy, I feel like has been even more uh, closely followed with uh, Suicide Squad right off the bat. Uh, those first yeah. couple issues, like how was that coordinated? Like even I felt like that's even more coordination than it would have been with a bigger series. It felt feels like. So I'm gonna. I'm. <laughs> so that was not the plan. Okay. <laughs> There wasn't a plan to do a crossover in issue three, yeah. Uh, you know, of, of Teen Titans Academy and Suicide Squad. But I think um, the brass at DC realized there was an opportunity for a cross promotion there mm-hmm. and really wanted Robbie Thompson and I to do a crossover early on. And so, you know, Robbie and I talked about it and, and with our editor and we, we, so, so we share an editor. Okay. So that was why that's how that got coordinated. Gotcha. So, um, so everything sort of went through cotton and, um, and, you know, I, the challenge for me was to do the suicide squad crossover, but still have it be a Titans Academy book where we, and it's only issue three, where we still want to learn about some of these students. Right. So, so I got to sort of 
give you a little bit of info on on Alinta on mm -hmm. Bolt um, because she's tied so heavily into with Amanda Waller and Suicide Squad. Um, I'll tell you, this is where I'm going to speak out of school, but at 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 a certain point in, in the scripting process, my editor said, "You know, we need." A, f a big fight like people are expecting to see the suicide squad fight the titans students and and he was right i like didn't leave really leave room for a, a fight i kind of like like led up to it and then diffused it immediately and he said you're gonna have to get some 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 fight in here so you need some pages for that so where can we make up pages and he said i don't think you need this alinta backstory stuff let's get rid of that <laughs> and i said no <laughs> I think it was the first time that I ever just said absolutely not to my yeah. editor. I said, this has to be about introducing the new kid. Mm -hmm. This whole story is about Alinta. We have to understand what yeah. her background is and why. There. And I'll tell you what, it's only two pages. I mean, I'm using a lot of economy here to give you a lot of story about this character in mm -hmm. two pages. You can't tell me to take that away. I will find two pages somewhere else. <laughs> and uh, And he said, fair enough go ahead, you know. So I was very happy that we got to have that in there because okay. I, I think one of the criticisms we, we, we got early on was just like, well, you know, we want it. I think there is a, I think everybody, I'm sorry, comic book fans, but I'm going to call you out because I'm one of you. I think we have gotten too spoiled by trades. Mm. We, we've gotten so spoiled in the way of being able to pick up a book and get the whole story in one sitting and not on a monthly basis, yeah. you know? And uh, I mean, God forbid Jeff Loeb was doing a monthly long Halloween now, like he did in 96 and 97, because I don't think people would stand for it, the fans today. No. Because, you know, I want to know everything now. <laughs> I want to know who the killer is. I want to know what the solution is on the first day that the book comes out. So the, so the, so the mystery of Red X's identity and, and, the, and who the students are Titans Academy, I couldn't, issue two, I was seeing people saying, well, this is, I want to know who are these people? I want to know everything. Who's, who's right X? What's the, uh, I was like, guys, it's a story. You know, <laughs> you gotta you just stick with us a little bit. Like, let us, <laughs> I've let been on, I've been on a handful of review shows where they're like, they didn't let us know who Red X was in the second issue of Future State. I'm like, <laughs> and then it's been like, all right, we're on issue five. We should know who Red X is now. <laughs> it's funny because like when Future State was out too, like we were already we were already promoting Titans Academy, where you knew he was on the cover and you knew the mystery of who he was was going to be integral to the story, you know. So but like, I think that it's trades. I think we do, we're just I'm used to. I like oh I'll wait for the trade. I pick up the trade. I get the whole story and it's great, you know. Yeah. And um, and so it's it's binge culture. Netflix did it. Let's blame Netflix. <laughs> it's Netflix's fault. Wait no, never mind. You have. Oh wait no, they on Netflix. Me. Yeah, <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, it is. It's interesting. I feel like we are in a, a culture of, I mean, because there are some stories where I wonder, um, like, would I have appreciated it as much as I did if I didn't read it in trade? Like, I read Long Halloween in trade. I just, I didn't grow up oh, reading. Yeah. So uh, I, I wonder if that does affect people and how we, we are such a culture. We need to know stuff. We want to be the first to tell you our opinions on things yeah. and <laughs> of what we oh, think yes. about. I'm aware. <laughs> I'm well aware. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. As I, creators. <laughs> I was more interested in that stuff when my book started coming out. I was like, oh, what are people saying? And now, oh, I'm like, I avoid everything now. Yeah. Because, it, you know, there's great, there's nice things out there, but pretty much the nice stuff that gets said, you get tagged in. So it's going to show up in your, you know, feed or whatever, or on your notifications. If you go, you, I don't go looking for trouble anymore. Is what I what I tell my friends. I'm like, you don't, you won't see me doing a keyword search, you know, because <laughs> that'll just send out all the wrong endorphins. Yeah, and let's be honest, if you get tagged in a negative post, people are gonna blast them for tagging someone. In totally, it. totally. You know, I probably will never see it. It'll get taken down by the time it gets to me. So <laughs> happily, there are, you know, I'm very, very grateful for the loyal base of fans that have. Uh, sort of come up un under Titans Academy. Mm -hmm. There are some folks who, you know, I'll interact with now and then on, on social media who just really are into it and and they're really supportive. And I feel like they're the ones who would be shouting somebody down if they tagged me in a negative, you know, post. And um, that's, yeah, I'm just very grateful for that. It, 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 believe me, 
if you're watching, it goes a long way to the creator's mental health when they know that you there's people out there who are supporting them. You know? Yeah. And I I feel like that just is I that's how I always try to review comics too for myself is I don't I try to stray away from like I don't like this, I don't hate I like I hate this. I try to stray into it wasn't for me because right. for everything that there is something that I love, people are like, I don't love this. And it doesn't mean it's a bad, it's art, art subjective. Like it's not I, something that I just I like, remember. you know, this wasn't for me. I can't remember the last time I posted my opinion about something that wasn't, that I felt wasn't for me or yeah. something I just didn't like, right? Why would I take the time <laughs> to go and write about that I didn't like a thing? Like, it's like, I will happily tell you about the stuff that I love, you mm -hmm. know, but you know, because I want you to read it too. But if it's something I'm telling you, don't, you know, it's to me going on social media and saying, I hate this thing, or I hated this thing, you know, is the same as this milk, I think tastes bad here. You taste it, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, no, it's not what I mean. <laughs> uh, it's so good. Um, well, we haven't gotten to tackle too much and i don't want to take up because too much i talk time. too much i told you this before we started I hey just you talk perfectly no this is great this is the stuff that uh people want to hear <laughs> what was it like uh writing on the show and then as well as now for the comics with kevin smith on the masters of the universe stuff i mean i've said this before and i will say it again i didn't know kevin before we started before i i was i, I was in his living room beginning the first day on Masters of the Universe Revelation for Netflix. Mm -hmm. And I just, I can't really say enough about the man. He mm -hmm. is one of the kindest and most generous people I've met in Hollywood. He is one of the smartest people. He's more, certainly one of the hardest working and most talented people I've met. And I wasn't expecting any of that. You know, I was like, oh, well, it's Kevin Smith, you know, it's, yeah, it'll be, it'll be fun. And, you know, he, you know, he is really just on top of everything yeah. and, um, and couldn't be more supportive uh, as a, as a boss, you know, he would never, he would absolutely hate uh, that I would refer to him as the boss and he can't stand it whenever I call him boss or whatever. <laughs> Because he thinks we're just, you know, we're a team. It's, you know, we're all working together. Yeah. But, you know, we, the, you know, he's, he is a, a born leader. I think early in the, the first day, I think he said something to the effect of like, um, you know, I've never run a writer's room before. So I don't know if I can do this. And I'm a little, you know, trepidatious about it. And so we were like, oh, well, you know, he said that and good. We'll cut him a little slack or you know, whatever. And then, like, he just like dove into it in the most perfect way where he was the absolute lead creative voice. He would elevate the stuff in the room that he thought was good. He would, you know, find a way around the stuff that wasn't helping in terms of the story. Mm. And um, he it was like, he was conducting an orchestra mm. and, uh, I, I, you know, and without any effort, it seemed to, to me at least. And so, um, so, so I laughed about him saying that he wasn't necessarily couldn't necessarily didn't know how to run a writer's room because I, the fact is he's a movie director and a movie director has to deal with a lot of different departments and a lot of different right. voices and just be the guy that brings all the voices together into one unified vision and that was what he did and you know and he's great at it so i i really hope i get to work with him a lot more in the future and you know some of the i've, I've had some of the most fun i've ever had in this business working mm. on this show and on these comics uh, with with kevin is this now have you always been a uh masters of the universe fan or has this kind of been a new yeah no i mean that's my era like i you know yeah i'm transformers is my number one when i was a okay. kid um you know and i i loved uh gi joe uh as well but i i watched uh you know the old classic uh animated series uh he-man the masters of the universe mm -hmm. and um and i loved it but i didn't have the toys because I, we weren't, we, you know, we didn't have a lot of money, but, but what we had, my parents just spoiled me rotten with Transformers, man. Like I, I had everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, so that was sort of it. It was like, you know, this is, you sort of pick a lane, <laughs> you know? So I, I was in the Transformers lane for toys, but I was watching the show and I loved it. And, uh, and, I, and then I loved the 2000 
show as well, the 2000X show, um, which really expanded on the lore a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, you know, you see sort of hints at, at, at all of the mythology that, yeah. that has sprung up. I mean, look, <clears throat> this is a fandom that has not, that has had two shows. I mean, if you don't count New Adventures, which is sort of a revamp of the original show. Right. Um, uh, you know, some people count that as three. So let's say three shows, three shows in 40 years. Right. And, but, but they've had a lot of comics. They've had a lot of comic strips. They've had stories. They've had books. They've had toys that have retold the mythology. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're dealing with a, a fan base that has, that is working from a headcanon Every individual fan is working from <clears throat> their own headcanon on how to make all of that stuff fit together and make sense to them. Yeah. And, uh, and so there's just kind of no way <laughs> that you can bring everybody's individual sort of headcanon to life on screen. So you, we just kind of went into it knowing that and knowing that, that we would try to be as true to what the mm -hmm. core of it is and what of, of what you know masters is and this is the same by the way with the long halloween you know let's try to be true to what the core of this thing is knowing that we'll never be able to put on screen exactly all the panels between panels and pages between right. pages and issues between issues that you added in when you read the book because that's how we read comics um so we had to put ours in there and hope that they're similar enough to yours that you'll go with us on the ride yeah you know, so it's kind of always the same when you're adapting. Masters of the Universe did feel like we were doing an adaptation. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I, I adapted Reign of the Superman and, and Long Halloween. Titans Academy, in some ways, feels like an adaptation of New Teen Titans. Um, so the idea is always, and this was taught to me by a guy named Jim Creed, who's a terrific uh, animation writer, mentor of mine, who, uh, who said, we always aim to make the thing thing that makes you feel the way you felt when you first experienced mm. this you know so for masters of the universe it was not even just the old show and the old comics it was how did you feel when you first played with these toys if we can capture some of that feeling you know then 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 we've done our job and i mean and that's how why we all became storytellers and writers is because that's what we did you know we were we were you know this is this is me as a kid i'm like you know i've got this this story playing out over here, yeah. you know, and then and then this element comes in, and it's like, what's going? On? What's this relationship now? You know, um, so we were basically training to be writers, and we didn't really know. <laughs> and that's where some of the greatest crossovers ever happen. You combine your toys that have well, no. <laughs> or or the the yeah. When I when you say the greatest crossovers, you mean yes. What's going on here? Like, I can't tell you. Oh, no, Unicron. Wait, now it's, now it's insane. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Well, Tim, thank you so much for just taking some time today to talk about comics and film and TV and just pop culture and stuff that us nerds love. <laughs> oh, I'm, I mean, it's a blast. I love talking about stuff. I love, um, you know, uh, certainly stuff that I'm working on. <laughs> um, but uh, no, it's always, always fun. And I, and I enjoy uh, your podcast. So Thanks. I'm very happy to come on. Yeah, absolutely. So before we wrap up, is there, um, is there, other, I hesitate to ask what else you're working on, because you have so much, is there stuff that you got? No, coming? This is what's funny is like, pretty much everything I've ever worked on has been like all got released within a month period this summer. So it was like Long Halloween, one and two, Master of the Universe Revelation, Transformers War for Cybertron, Kingdom came out like all in this period. Meanwhile, Shazam you know, books came out, Master of the Universe books came out, Titans Academy is still ongoing. So now I'm at the point where there's nothing that is coming out in terms of animation mm -hmm. that I or television that I can tell you about. Yeah. Because I'm not allowed to tell you about it yet. Um, the only thing I can talk about really is just to say, you know, Titans Academy is continuing right now and, yeah. and uh, you know, the story is coming to a head and, you know, it's important to sort of check in on that Shazam book because it's going to directly inform what happens in Titans Academy and uh, as, we, as we careen toward the events of, uh, of Future State. Yes. Nice. Well, um, 
Thank you again. Where can people follow along with what you're working on and make sure they're, you know, getting all the notifications of what you're, you're doing? Yeah, if you, if you can stand it, because I seem like I'm constantly out there hawking some new thing. If you can stand it, follow me on Twitter at I am Tim Sheridan. Um, and uh, and uh, I'm never on Instagram, but if you want to hit me up there, it's at I love Tim Sheridan. <laughs> and all the links are, are in the description of this video. Um, again, thanks so much, Tim, for taking some time to just talk with me today. Thank you. All right. With that being said, hopefully you all can find some time to curl up, grab a book, and nerd out. Peace.